Media being joined by the management of TVS Supply Chain. Ravi Vishwanathan, the managing director at TVS Supply Chain Solutions, joins us now. Mr. Vishwanathan, thanks so much for taking the time out and joining us. Uh, now, let me ask it's a decent set of numbers in revenue and net profit for this quarter and you are targeting a 15% year on your top line growth by FY27. What do you think is going to aid this and what are your growth drivers going to be? I think importantly uh, FY24 was a very key year because uh, the integrated supply chain segment grew by almost 14.4% uh, and this is uh, on the back of uh, a, a uh, probably a difficult year for the freight business globally because global trade volumes are down. But going forward, I think uh, when we look at our pipeline, we have over 4,000 crores of uh, pipeline as we speak today. And that gives us tremendous confidence that we will continue on this double-digit double, double digit growth trajectory. And our aim is to get to about a 10 to 15% uh, growth uh, for the company uh, in FY25 and going beyond. At the same time, we want to focus also on ensuring that uh, we're driving profitable growth and uh, we continue to look at how we can expand our EBITDA margins. Uh, for FY25, we're looking at about a 50 to 100 basis points uh, increase in the uh, EBITDA margins. Right, Mr. Vishwanathan, good afternoon. This is Vinny joining in the conversation as well. And as you pointed out, you know, in terms of the current auto pipeline, that stands at around 4,000 crore rupees. How much of it would be realized in Q1 and Q2 of FY25? And also, could you tell us in terms of the current order inquiries you're seeing, what is the visibility going forward in terms of the order book? So when I say 4,000 crores uh, pipeline is really the revenue pipeline that I look for in FY25. So typically our conversion ratios are about 25%. Uh, so we're looking at about con uh, converting about uh, uh, 1,000 crores of revenue uh, from new business development uh, for the fiscal FY25. And that's being driven on the back of uh, some very large orders uh, that we are today engaged in. We spoke about the fact that we won certain marquee customers uh, over the last couple of uh, years, especially uh, the big uh, breakthrough for us was Centrica in the UK. And that has opened the doors to be able to participate in very large deals. Uh, and Centrica, as you remember, was a 2000 course uh, uh, deal that we, that we signed. And we think that we have a good opportunity now to convert a few more of that size over the next, uh, I would say, uh, four to eight quarters. Uh, so the deal sizes are increasing. The quality of our customers is also significantly shifting. Uh, we've spoken about the fact that we wanted to be uh, uh, targeting about 100 Fortune 500 customers. Two years ago, that number was 62. Last year, in FY24, that number increased to 78. Uh, so uh, we, we continue on the trajectory of increasing both our uh, revenue trajectory and also the quality of customers. And what that means is it gives us far more opportunities to mine these customers and provide more capabilities that we have uh, across the uh, supply chain uh, segment that we participate. All right, and also tell us um, about your margins because the network solutions margins have been on a downtrend, whereas on the flip side, your integrated supply chain margins have improved. So what's the sustainable level of EBITDA margins we can expect going forward? The supply, if you look at the overall uh, uh, company, we have expanded the uh, margin. So if you look at uh, the uh, EBITDA numbers, in spite of the fact that our revenues in FY24 uh, dropped significantly by almost about 794 crores compared to FY23, uh, we have been able to expand our EBITDA margins. So our EBITDA numbers uh, were actually 25 crores more than FY23, uh, which marked about a 3.7% increase uh, in the margin. So we continue to look at uh, uh, EBITDA uh, growth and um, uh, we believe that while the freight business itself is going through turmoil, we are focusing on profitability. We are looking at operational efficiency, procurement efficiency, and we are, we are still waiting to call what it would be in terms of volume growth because of the uncertainty which exists in the market. Uh, the global trade volumes are down. Uh, Red Sea situation is, is not uh, adding any joy. Uh, and the wars are, are, are going to uh, create that uncertainty. But our focus really is to say, in this environment, how do you ensure that we bring in operational efficiency? And that's what you would have seen um, in, in FY24, that although uh, the, uh, the revenue dropped, our EBITDA has actually expanded. And as a company, we are focused on ensuring that we deliver 50 to 100 basis point improvement in our EBITDA numbers uh, for FY25. 
Right. Also, if you could just talk to us a bit more in terms of the revenue mix. How do you see India versus the rest of the uh, world mix going forward? And what are the demand trends across sectors that are shaping up uh, in India that you're seeing? So if you look at the current mix, it's about uh, 30 and 70, 30 in India and 70 rest of the world. Our aspiration is to grow uh, at a significant differential velocity in India, given the economic activity that we see. Now that the elections are over, we believe that the continuation of the policies and probably even accelerating in some of the uh, policies to, to uh, boost manufacturing will, will continue. And that should give a significant boost to the supply chain business. So uh, we believe that the economic activity will, uh, here will drive higher growth. Um, uh, and aspirationally, we want to be at about 35%, 65% over the next uh, 8 to 12 quarters uh, from a mixed perspective. All right, so that's on the global front, but how are your demand trends uh, across sectors shaping up in India as well? Right. So um, if you look at the sectoral trend, um, I would say manufacturing continues to be uh, significantly good in terms of our pipeline. Uh, we, 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 we signed a you know, fair amount of deals last year and also uh, early on we had announced uh, a couple of deals in the month of April here in India. So India... We continue to see uh, an upside on terms of manufacturing, on the manufacturing side. But there have been some uh, uh, setbacks, especially on the e-commerce side. Uh, we, we don't participate in the B2C segment, as you all know. But uh, on, on the fulfillment side, uh, we, uh, you know, we, 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 are, we are watching the e-commerce space, especially with some of the uh, well-known brands going through a little bit of uh, turmoil at this point in time. But um, you know, overall, uh, we, are, we, are, we are bullish about India. We are bullish about the fact that Tremendous opportunity given the economic pipeline uh, and the activity going on here. And uh, the fact that the continuation of policies and uh, uh, the, the velocity at which hopefully uh, the, the uh, shift of the, uh, the, the accelerator to the China plus one strategy should create more opportunities for the supply chain uh, in India. In, in. Right, and just a last question from me is in terms of the company that, uh, you know, has reduced its debt in FI24 and it's uh, majorly consists of uh, working capital debt. What's your outlook in terms of the debt levels going forward? I think uh, it's a very, very pertinent question. Uh, we have a very fit balance sheet today. We started last year with about 1,783 crores of uh, gross debt. That's now pruned down to less than uh, just about 700. And if you net, net that for uh, the cash balances, we just have about 200 crores of uh, uh, working capital debt. And it entirely be working capital debt. All our long-term debts are retired. So we are very fit as a company. And that's important in the, in, in the light of what I said, especially around some of the large deals that we, that we are pursuing. We're very confident of converting some of those large deals uh, in, in the next four to eight quarters. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it sets us very well. So from a balance sheet perspective, we, we have, we, I would say we, we are extremely fit. All right. Well, uh, thanks so much for joining us today uh, on the show, Mr. Vishwanathan. Thank you for taking your time out. That was the management of uh, TVS Supply Chain. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.